Hello and welcome to Yes, a Stripper podcast. I am your host, Daisy Ducati. In this podcast, we will discuss the ins and outs, ups and downs of our lives and experiences as sex workers. All right. Hello, Amanda. How are you today? Hey, girl. I'm good. How are you? (laughs) I'm doing awesome. Um, I'm so glad to have you as a guest on our show. It's going to be really fun talking to you. So for those listeners out there, Amanda is someone that I am so impressed by. She auditioned for my new show, Kinky Summer Nights, which by the time this episode comes out will already be running at Scores in Las Vegas. And I was just so impressed with her poll work and her stage presence that I just had to have her as part of the show. So Amanda, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me in the show. Thank you for having me on this podcast. Like, seriously, such an honor. I think it's incredible what you're doing. And the whole thing is going to be so amazing. Seriously, you really stepped up and you're doing this. So you should be proud of yourself. (laughs) Thank you. I'm really excited. (laughs) I'm 23. Um, I moved to Las Vegas six months ago. Um, I'm from Chicago. I started dancing there in July of 2018. I started pole dancing one year ago though. So I danced for a few years. Yeah, girl, like I danced for a few years just to make money and stuff like that. And then I started working at a club with spinning poles. And the, the thing about me is like, when I see something happening in an environment that I'm in often, I got to know how to do it. I got to be somewhere up there, you know, like I got to, I got to be acquainted with it. And when I started pole dancing, I had no idea that I would just fall in love with it straight up. And I really couldn't stop. So when I got to Vegas, it became a whole new level of um, performing because I was working at this club that was small and like the poles were small and, you know, I would do my tricks, but when you're on a big stage in front of a bunch of people in Las Vegas, like you learn how to have real stage presence and mm-hmm. have fun with it. And it becomes so like exhilarating to have people, a big crowd, like cheer you on for real. And it's a whole different thing in Vegas. The energy here is yeah. crazy and amazing. And I've had so many opportunities and yeah, for six months now, I kind of came here on a whim and had no idea what it was going to bring me. It could have just been trash. You know what I mean? It could have yeah. been horrible. I took the risk and I'm glad I'm still here and I'm planning on staying for a while. So hell yeah, that's awesome. So what's it like dancing out in Chicago? I've never danced out there. Honestly, I worked at a couple clubs. I didn't, I tried the bigger clubs. Okay. Like Mm -hmm. uh, I tried two of the bigger clubs I worked at for two weeks each. And then one of them, actually the scores out in Chicago, I worked at for one night, Um, but (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> clearly wasn't my vibe <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, it's like I'm good but the club I primarily worked at was more it wasn't really like a strip club it was kind of in between a Hooters and a strip club like mm. somewhere in the middle you know what I mean cool. it was very very like crude and not a lot going on but I still was running it up there regardless <laughs> um but what I could say about the difference between Chicago and Vegas is Chicago people are very, um, I love Chicago. I love a lot of people there. Um, it's not tourists. It, you know, mm-hmm. it's mostly people going home to their families. A lot of them are literally lying <laughs> about where they're at or like that they're at work longer. It's just coming from like a negative energy in my opinion. Like yeah. when people are on vacation, they're not coming from that energy. They're coming from a positive energy and they give that to you. So when I was working in Chicago, I was picking up like, a lot of just demons, you know, like negative energy. And like, I mean, it's not that that will totally happen to you, but I guess like kind of the lifestyle I was living was promoting that. And, you know, now that I'm mostly, I go to work to seriously like perform and be professional about it. Um, more so than not, uh, I don't think I would be able to work in Chicago anymore. I think that I had to be like pretty lit. (laughs) It's interesting, like the different vibes of dancing in different cities. I know I've danced in a bunch of different places and like each each city has its own style of strip club and like mm-hmm. Vegas is definitely its own world. Like you're 
you're like a full on showgirl on stage here. <laughs> like and you know it really surprises me the girls like i was never surprised in chicago i i didn't go on stage in chicago i took the dj like i you know, <laughs> put me on like i'm here to hug. like i'm not here to go on stage <laughs> but in vegas it surprises me when girls don't want to go on stage because it's like there's so many people and it's like also such a good opportunity whether you know pole tricks or not like you can you know you can own that moment that's your moment how many people can say that they have a job that they get to get up on a stage and be the center of attention and li quite literally put on a show whatever yep. kind of show you want it's you it's like people don't get to do that <laughs> i never make money from i never could quite wrap my head around paying to not go on stage that was something i never had even seen until i danced in vegas and like for me going on stage is like the fun the most fun part other than getting paid <laughs> and it's like it's also advertising for like the lap dances and champagne rooms. It's just like, this is what I can do. So I never like, yeah. I never could wrap my head around not wanting to. That's something I definitely did not understand when, you know, cause the club I started at the polls didn't spin. And like mm -hmm. I said, I was there for one reason and one reason only. And I basically did the numbers in my head, like, okay, energy versus income, right? I'm putting in mm -hmm. the least amount of energy in VIPs like so and I'm a very good conversationalist I would be able to just go around and talk to people I'm like I cannot waste my time on stage like I know I got this without it I don't want to waste energy I know I can do it uh but then you know that doesn't work for so long something yeah. will work but we change as people like the energy and an environment will change like just systems do not last forever so I started to notice that that specific system was not working for me or a guy would want to go with a girl because he saw her on stage and not me. And then I was like, like, what the hell? And so I was like, okay. So I started kind of doing it more, especially when I went to Wisconsin, I understood that much more. Like uh, as soon as I got off stage, I would be like, let's say it's going slow, right? Let's say I'm walking around. It's all like, I'm missing, I'm missing, I'm missing. Nobody wants to do anything, whatever. And then now, like, I can have the comfort in knowing, okay, I'm just going to chill until I go on stage, then I'll be ready. Because when you're on stage, you can pay attention to who's watching you. And then it's almost like so easy at that point, or people are like in line for you. So I mean, I could save my energy now, do one stage set, and then the, the path will open up like where I need to go. So I really love going on stage just for, I mean, multiple reasons, but that's definitely one of them is just knowing where to go next. <laughs> that's yeah yeah i i love being on stage like i am such an attention whore <laughs> like i couldn't conceive of not wanting to go on stage <laughs> oh yeah and uh it's so much fun it's so much fun so how did you get so good at pole dancing so quickly because i i can't wrap my head around the fact that you've only been pole dancing for a year i thought you'd been doing this way longer <laughs> Well, basically, um, in 2020 is when I started at that club in Wisconsin, right? Mm -hmm. And so I saw the pole spun. I learned one spin, like the one where you like reach around, whatever, like yeah. just like a straight up big spin. And that's all I could do. That's it. Cause I'm like, whatever, as long as I know one thing, right. And I could do like a basic invert, nothing crazy. I didn't put any type of work into it. And then, well, um, that's because I was still kind of working in Chicago. Like I was doing both. So I mean, I, it was just too much, you know, I was like tired and whatever. So I decided to put all of my time and energy into working in Wisconsin. So I had a friend who lived up there cause it was an hour and a half from where I lived. And she said that I could stay with her on the weekends. And so I would drive up there. Um, she, she was a bartender. So she would open up the club every morning. We opened at like, I believe 1 PM. So mm -hmm. I slept over at her house all weekend, uh, Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, sometimes Sunday. Like I would just stretch it out yeah. and work my ass off. And I would go with her when she would open because um, I would want, I mean, fuck, why not? Right. So yeah. I go with her and um, during the entire day. So basically we closed at two in the morning. So I'm there from 1 PM to 2 AM every day of the weekend. And I was just, all I had to do was pole dance. Like I have a lot of energy. If you ever, anyone's ever met me, like yeah. I just have natural energy and I have to use it. I have to use my energy. So if there's nobody there to talk to, if there's no money to be made, obviously during the day shift, it's like not that much going on. I 
would record myself pole dancing and I would do it again and again and again. Like it was crazy. I just can't let it go. Cause once I see myself do a trick and I feel like, Oh, maybe I could do it better. Or I'm missing one thing or, Oh, that was so cool. Like, why am I not doing this more? Like, it's just more of these realizations of like, wow, this could be something cool. And I had my own pole as well. So I would practice on there, but it was another thing how you said, like, I felt like an attention whore about it. I was like, damn, like, this is some skill. Like, I'm not just up here shaking ass. And like, I used to do cheerleading and I, um, I didn't get uh, my own like, tumbling classes. I really taught myself because I wanted it. And I was pissed off that everybody around me was acting like I couldn't have it. They were like, you, you're you not good at this or you don't have the proper training beforehand. I was like, bitch, watch me teach myself. Go for, like, seriously, like, you know, I was, it almost made me angry. And I learned that drive and passion from cheer. And honestly, since cheer ended right before I started dancing, I kind of had a hole, uh, an athletic hole. I've always been an athlete. I've always felt athletic. I have all that energy and I wasn't, I wasn't yet pole dancing. So I really had nothing besides run up a bag every night. Like, you know, that was my, my, my sport. And it, that doesn't, money is not that fulfilling. You know what I mean? So after a while, that's why pole dancing, I, once I realized this is, this is like that. This is, I, that's the last time I had this feeling is when I did cheer that lit up inside of me. And I, I decided I would put all my effort into it. I would keep trying. I would keep going. And Vegas, like I said, really upped it a notch because I felt like, you know, you see other girls who are good and you're like, damn, I'm not really that good. <laughs> and I'm pretty, I'm not competitive in like a, against another person way. I'm competitive with myself but like when other people do things that I feel like I can do too, but have not yet done, I get with myself. I'm like, why can't I do that? Well, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And then I get competitive with myself and try to do it. And Vegas is a really good place for that. If you get inspired by other girls or um, other women who, I mean, regardless of just pole dancing or uh, running their own businesses or entrepreneurs or anything like that. Like if you get inspired easily, Vegas is just such a great place to be. And I'm grateful because I feel, I feel so blessed to be able to pole dance here and to have had the skills beforehand. I didn't know why I was in Wisconsin for 12 hours a day working on oh. my pole dancing until I got to Vegas and I'm here now. And now I realize since I put in all that work now it's being recognized and it's mm -hmm. paying off and it's amazing. So yeah, I gotta say, like, Vegas and maybe Portland are where I've definitely seen some of the most incredible stage performances. <laughs> like, some of these, some of these ladies are just, uh, just excellent, excellent performers, and it's, it's awe-inspiring for sure. Oh, man. Um, so, I have a question. When you got to Wisconsin with the spinning pole, did you know beforehand that the pole spun? All right, so here's my <laughs> <laughs> okay, this story is so funny. Okay, so I did know because um I I went there first as a customer and I okay. that's when I was like, damn, you know, like these are these are cool, but I had been on a spinning pole prior to this. I went what that one night I worked at scores in Chicago. Um when I auditioned, mm -hmm. the pole fun. And they told me it spun and I had never been on a spinning pole in my life, right? This is a year before Wisconsin ever happened. And um, I was like, okay, you know, I just thought, cause I was used to a static pole and like, you know, you can, you would have to put momentum to spin on a static pole. So yep. I figured, okay, do not put any force into it. Right. Like perfect. So there are these two people watching me. I'm doing like, I think one song and I go up there and I'm doing really good. I'm like, okay, I did a couple spins, nothing too crazy. Like I felt like, okay, like I can, I can handle this. I, I didn't go too crazy. I know what it feels like now. And then I think literally towards the end of the song, they're watching me the whole time. Mind you, they're watching me the whole time. I started to get a little too excited. Okay. I guess <laughs> because I started spinning and I could not stop. And I'm thinking in my head, the world is going by like fucking, I don't even know in my head. There's so many thoughts of like, I don't even know how I'm supposed to get down. 
do I feel so yes. stupid? <laughs> you know, you just, like, put your foot down. You're like, fuck it. Like, you know, you get down. And I look at these two people who are auditioning me and they're both like backs are turned <laughs> like so I don't know whether I got super lucky and they just did not catch me spinning out of fucking control or they literally had second embarrassment <laughs> they, <laughs> they weren't even watch watching me <gasps> oh so I, I can imagine them saying like oh fuck like you <laughs> I got hired so I was like okay whatever we're good but I also did not go on stage that night but yeah <laughs> Yep, I knew these poles spun in Wisconsin, and I knew my prior experience. That was my only experience with a spinning pole ever in my life. And, I mean, I I was kind of interested, but I was more like, damn, like, am I not going to be able to make money because I don't know how to do this? Like, that was my instant thought, which was crazy because I know myself. Like, I know that if I want to do something, I'll do it. So. You'll get that money. <laughs> I know, hell yeah, somehow, some way. And, girl, I did. It was right after the pandemic, and – People, people were throwing bands. People had bands to throw, so we were collecting those. You know? Yeah, <laughs> it was amazing. So, okay. yeah, I asked about the poll because the first time I came to Vegas and got on stage, no one told me, <laughs> and it was Girl. absolutely terrifying. I had no idea, and like I had come from dancing in San Francisco, where it was like a tiny little stage. The pole didn't spin. It was nothing frilly, but. <laughs> Boy, was I surprised. <laughs> oh, no. so what happened? <laughs> I, I just spun out of control and, like, almost busted my ass on stage and had to, like, play it off. and <laughs> well, I'll roll over and twerk. Right? I did a lot of floor work. <laughs> that's what Bella said uh, yesterday. <laughs> I yeah. was like, that is, that's quote of the, of the month. Okay. <laughs> oh man pole spinning poles are so scary when you're not used to it like the momentum they can pick up is so terrifying and it takes it takes a while to get used to spinning that fast oh it's <laughs> I honestly me a, a lot of girls will uh they love the graceful I think you could tell a lot about a girl from her pole dancing because you see mm -hmm. me like I gotta be cranking that bitch. Like I need the pole to be like going to for me to be like super excited and like feel like I'm really into it. I could be doing a trick and it could be slow, but it is still the same thing. It's still impressive. And people will be like, oh my God, that's crazy. But in my head, I'll be like, oh my God, that sucked, you know? Because nah, like I feel like I for me to feel fulfilled and like I'm really doing something, I will go to the ceiling, I'll push off the ceiling super fast and then push back the other way. And like, I love, I'll push off the floor. Like, I just love going fast. And, but those poles that are, you know, it, they're typically the at home poles, um, thinner mm -hmm. ones. Uh, Cause the ones that the clubs are usually thicker. The thin ones though, not gonna lie, I do get a little scared on those. <laughs> Some yeah. tricks I do, I'm like, this is crazy. I can't even hold myself because the faster you're spinning, the harder it is to invert and do other things because you're going mm -hmm. so fast that it just feels like so heavy. But if you do it, you feel so good. <laughs> Honestly, yesterday was the first time I'd ever been on one of the thinner poles and it was it was weird. I I was always used to the thicker poles and like it's it's easier to get a grip because I have giant hands, but like you're right, it's hard to like hold yourself on it. It's it's a strange sensation. Yeah. It's interesting. There's for sure. Um so like when I had my pole at home and then the pole in Wisconsin, my pole at home was thinner. And so I would practice a different way. Um just like a different way at home, just because I knew mm -hmm. some tricks were going to be more achievable. And a lot of them were for a video specifically. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I'd be able to practice at home. It was on a carpet. I liked it. I like having a pole in a room with a carpet because then I'm not scared to fall or anything like that. That's like, what I have right oh, here. My pole's right in front of me. <laughs> bro, right? Yeah. Oh God, and I'm not the type to like the pole. Like when I'm at home, I don't like pole dancing in heels. Um, it's just different. I like to practice without my shoes on. Cause I feel like first it was the same thing with cheer. Like when I would tumble, I would tumble without my shoes on. And then when I was like going for the real deal type of thing, uh, then I put my shoes on and make mm -hmm. sure that's how I knew I really had the skill. So usually, you know, I really know I could do something if I could do it with my heels on. And especially if I could do it at the club, but I don't obviously have a pole anymore right now. Um, 
soon I'll get a place here for real and maybe put a pole up and all that. But I don't even know, girl. I've just been here for six months. I'm chilling. So <laughs> I feel I'm you. I'm still traveling. <laughs> Well, we have a great ex poll deal through Yes a Stripper. If you are interested later, we'll talk about it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I I have been having fun since I got my home poll. Like it's so much easier to practice when there's no one watching. <laughs> like I get so nervous on stage and like scared to try new stuff that I have to do it when no one's watching. It's <laughs> yeah, there's definitely that element of like being alone. And for me, it's like, I love when I learn a new trick and it's just because uh, I was trying shit, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And a lot of the time that happens, sometimes it would happen at home, but a lot of the time that happens when I'm like performing or when I'm at the club or when people are watching there is definitely pros and cons to both being alone. I can like watch a video and like try to get my grip right and try again and again. Cause the only way I can really get something is if I try again and again um, and just keep doing it. Once I get it, I got to do it two more times. Cause that's how mm -hmm. I can lock it in. But some of these grips are just crazy where you don't even know where you're supposed to put your arms and you're trying to figure out how, if it looks right or like whatever. And you don't want to be doing all that in front of people. Like right. you're just warming up and you're trying to, I like to go through what I already know really well and mm -hmm. I like to clean everything up. So I'll record my most basic tricks and like try to make them the best that I can and like just tweak them a little more each time. Um, and I could do that type of stuff in front of, you know, people, but mm -hmm. if I'm trying to really concentrate on something, I realize like I can't do it. Cause naturally if, I'm, if people are there, I'm low key trying to put on a show, you know, mm -hmm. subconsciously. <laughs> trying to put on a show and nobody can focus when their adrenaline's doing that. Like you can't focus on learning something new or actually learning something new. I feel like I won't actually get it. Like yeah. if people are watching. I but cannot. then, then again, like sometimes the adrenaline of being on stage, I feel like it gives you like superpowers <laughs> to actually like get through the set. Do you feel like that? Yep. Oh, hundred percent. The only difference I feel when, um, let's like if I took like a break like about a week or so I would fly home and I don't pull dance there I'd come back and my first night the only difference is like the cardio like I could feel the difference and you know by the third song I'm like whoo like I'm a little more winded but skill set wise I feel like I always got it especially when there's people there because shit like you know what I mean like and then there's people who like it's more than just the audience. It's more like everybody who knows you, everybody who's seen you dance. For me, it's like, a, it's a lot of pressure. Cause I mean, I know other people might not be able to tell if I'm rusty, but like they might. And if they do, then you've got people thinking like, oh, she's losing her game. She's, she's not as good or, you know what I mean? And I hold yeah. myself to like such a weird standard of like, I always have to be getting better. I always have to be improving. Otherwise, why am I doing what I'm doing? Like, I don't ever want to stay stagnant. And I mean, I love, I love, love, love the adrenaline. That's why people are like, I've gotten comments like, oh, well, you know, if you want to pole dance and like when I'm done, you know, dancing, dancing, like in clubs, um, I, I don't think I'll be done performing. Like I'll show up to mm -hmm. the club and, you know, uh, only go on stage unless someone literally wants to do a thousand dollar VIP. <laughs> I won't be available. <laughs> right. That's the goal. That is my main goal. That's the, because I know for a fact that when I'm done dancing, I don't want to be done dancing. Like I want to have that, like, I want to have that encouragement. I want to have that stage presence. It's not the same when you're just making a video for Instagram or like in your own pole room or at a studio or it's different when you got a whole crowd, a whole stage, that adrenaline and a dopamine rush, like up mm -hmm. the ass, like so much, um, just like you just feel so accomplished when you did something badass or even when it was hard yes. and you pushed through or whatever the case is like doing it in general a lot of people can't so I mean shit anybody who gets up on stage whether you're doing pole tricks or not you're a badass that's my opinion amen that's why I always hate when people ask the question like what are you gonna do after this when you retire and it's like I don't actually have a plan to retire like I'm gonna be on stage oh! or in front of a camera until I die <laughs> like <laughs> like literally what are you gonna do after you're done working at Denny's like <laughs> <laughs> right anybody like, ask that? like no that's crazy because it's like 
that's kind of where I'm going with uh, my YouTube channel is I've done a lot of stripper vlogs. And if I don't know, I have not seen one person do a stripper vlog the way that I do it. I literally stretch. I bring fruits, <laughs> fruits uh, to work and make sure that you know, I'm eating and like drinking a ton of water and, you know, I go to work and I warm up. Like people don't realize that, okay, yes, I'll do lap dances. What the fuck? Like, because first of all, it's so easy money, right? Mm -hmm. It's easy money. It's right there. You might as well. Um, we can make a lot of money dancing. Um, and whatever you do, you all do me, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, people need to understand that it's much more than that. I mean, there's a whole aspect to dancing and being a stripper that, people just don't even look at or understand that you could literally go there and just do stage sets all night and still make a thousand dollars if you mm -hmm. really put your heart into it and your work into it and like like seriously and you know it's not always ideal to think that that could be a guarantee it's not always going to be a guarantee but you know that is a whole a whole thing that should be um acknowledged and like uh praised is that mm -hmm. that it's not easy to do that and um you know, I just, I want people to see that there is more to it than the stigma. There, the stigma should not exist. That is over. It is 2022. Everyone is doing what they want. People are like being themselves. People are coming out on the internet to their families, to the whole world. And there is no shame. There's no more room for shame. So why am I still seeing girls be shamed for being a dancer or being a stripper? Pole dancers are getting um censored on tiktok and instagram when they're not they're not shaking ass they're not even doing anything they're doing some real shit they're really mm -hmm. pole dancing it's hard you know and i hope to see in the next few years uh dancers get way more credibility because i mean there's good and bad in every profession right like what are we gonna do after a lot of girls invest their money a lot of girls continue performing what's wrong with that tell me what's mm -hmm. wrong with being a performer right <laughs> Nothing. Right. Nothing. And tell me, you know, like if a guy wants to give me his money, I'd be crazy to not take it. You know what I mean? Like people act like there's something wrong with that. Like I'm getting tipped for my services for being present and available, having a conversation or putting on a show that mm -hmm. is equivalent as like doing someone's taxes. You're doing them a favor. And, and no, no it. one asks actors or ballet dancers or any other kinds of performers what their retirement plan is. <laughs> like, oh, it's I just it not a conversation that other people have to have. And exactly. I think it's, Unless... it's totally um, normal and acceptable to want to be a performer forever. <laughs> like, I mean, that's what I, j I literally just said this the other day to someone. I was like, do you think J-Lo travels the world still and does movies and all these concerts in heels? And I'm sure she's busting her ass for it because she needs the money. Like, you know what I mean? You think right. she's doing it because she needs to? Why would she right. do it still? Or Madonna. <laughs> like, um, yeah. Swear, like, clearly, you know, there's something in that. And I don't understand why they would get more credibility than a dancer. A performer, a pole dancer, a ballet dancer, a, mm -hmm. you know, like a burlesque show or a Cirque du Soleil, like any of these things are equivalent. There's no better or, or worse just because of what your label is. It's almost like saying because you work, you know, because you work at this store versus this grocery store versus that grocery store or whatever, you know, like, or you drive for Uber or Lyft. <laughs> like, it's not, you know, it's this literally the same concept, the same concept, but on a different scale. Maybe I don't want a million, hundred thousand, bajillion people fucking watching me, and I don't want to travel the world. Maybe I want to go to my local club, bust out a few stage sets, feel really good about myself, uh, see people that I know very mm -hmm. well, and communicate with them, and talk to them, and be hype with them. And then go home mm -hmm. <laughs> and make a ton of money. <laughs> Love what I'm doing. Like, there's so nothing wrong with that. And when I'm, you know, I see people pole dance for a long time. I see people be athletes for a long time. There's nothing, there should be no limit on that if that's what you love. The only mm -hmm. thing is if that's what you love. Why would you put a limit on that? Why would you act like it can't fit into the rest of your life? That is your life. Your passion is your life. That, that's it. Exactly, exactly. Like, it's, it's, it's so silly. It's so silly how people think of stripping as like transitional work, when they don't realize how much joy can come out of like entertaining people and being glamorous and performing and having those conversations, you know?
it's it's beautiful 100 <laughs> it's beautiful so wait tell me it about is. It's YouTube. Me so much. oh tell me about your youtube channel oh my uh okay this is a good this is a good one <laughs> okay so basically i started my youtube channel in 2019 basically i told myself like i've been thinking about it for a while i kind of was I was like, I have no excuse anymore. I feel so good about myself right now in my life. Like, I feel so confident with how I look. And, you know, there's no reason to care about what other people think. And I know I have a really good personality. So I said, fuck it. And I just posted a little uh, video. It's called my awkward AF first video. <laughs> and Cute. it's literally two minutes of me saying like, hey guys, like, uh, I'm starting a YouTube channel now, <laughs> uh, just letting you know, and when I started it, I, it was very quick, I was very quickly engaged in it, you know, I, I know, I figured things out pretty fast, I started doing story times, I would do, like, little get ready with me, is there anything pretty much that I could think of, and basically, every time I posted a video, I got an idea for the next one, it was, like, very quickly moving, and it was just, like, an instant passion, this is before, pole dancing so it was kind of like what was filling my time mostly and yeah. I saw instant star power in myself like I knew I could do it and I still know I can do it and I never had planned on like showing the internet that I was a dancer I never once thought that I would do that because I thought it would just ruin my reputation until I started pole dancing then I thought you know I've been doing YouTube for about a year now and it's been great it's been awesome I went viral like one time I was like that's fucking amazing and hell yeah year. that's awesome and then I started thinking like you know that's not my real life like I kept thinking like not not that that's not my real life but I'm hiding a huge part of my life is that I'm a mm -hmm. dancer and let's say I get a huge ass fan base like you know, I'm pretty open and honest. And when you're a dancer, and then let's say you're telling a story, which I've had to do already, I had to move some things around because I, I, I was at the club, I was working, I had to like lie about, oh, I was at a friend's house or oh, I was, you know, like, I didn't want to say that I was a dancer. And I kept thinking, like, I would have so much more to say if I was just being myself. Like, I get mm -hmm. stuck on these ideas of what I'm going to post. But how could you ever have a problem knowing what to post if you're just opening your mouth and talking, you know, and not having yeah. to think about it. Like, so I figured I'm going to post a stripper vlog finally. And that was actually a year ago, uh, this in May. So, I mean, that was, um, last month, but yeah, a year ago, I posted my first stripper vlog and became, you know, known as a stripper on the internet and it got 23,000 views on YouTube. <laughs> I was wow. dying. I was like, I couldn't even believe it. Cause I remember when I posted it, I was thinking like, yeah, this is, I know this is going to get some views because of the stripper vlog, right? But I didn't think, like, that would happen. And that was the next time that I, I did some serious numbers on YouTube. And I was so fucking proud of myself. And I was like, damn, this is crazy. Like, I got to keep moving with this. But at the time, I was still really struggling with, like, um, identity, like, self-identity. Mm -hmm. Like, I was having huge issues with that. And it's so hard to have an online presence when you're going through that because, you know, mm -hmm. I had a big platform on TikTok over quarantine. And the point of doing that was to get them to my YouTube. I never wanted to be TikTok famous, but I made that shit happen because yeah. I literally had nothing else to do. So <laughs> got a couple hundred thousand people along for my ride here. And um, I started to feel like uh, just like so much pressure. And I had to drop the ball hard. I dropped it hard. Like I stopped doing TikTok. I stopped doing YouTube for, for like six months because I was going through a, a crisis. Like I had hair extensions, took them out. I tanned every single day, had not tanned since then. So I was basically being pale for the first time in three years. I'd never had been pale, had short hair for the first time in three years, took my nails off. I had no, my nails were not done. I just wanted to be natural, you know, and find out who I was. And so I was like, I put no pressure on myself. I literally dropped everything drop social media all that just to focus on myself because I figured this cannot go anywhere that I'm going to be able to be I'm going to that's going to be sustainable because anything that is built off of something that's not truly you cannot be sustainable so mm -hmm. I really wanted to get there so I could be sure and not scared of like my future with it and whatnot so 
I went through this whole journey all summer of like self-discovering and things like that. And then I finally decided to move to Vegas. And when I moved to Vegas um, in October, I decided to do that. That's when I decided that I would, um, cause at the time I was like, I would put no pressure. I was like, I could, I could quit this all together. I don't need to do this. I don't need to do anything. All I need to do is be mm-hmm. happy. That's it. That's all that matters right now. Yes. And I decided that no, like YouTube, it is for me. Like I, <laughs> I don't care how many breaks I take until it really happens. Like that just goes to show like the ups and downs that I go through in my life. Like I will always be committed. You know, it's okay to take a break from things. It's okay to go and find yourself. And, Mm -hmm. you know, even if it's like a few weeks or a few months or whatever, as long as you keep, you know that something is for you and you really love something when you just keep going back to it, you just keep going back to it. You never have to deny yourself of that and like think that you're not going to make it because you're not doing that every fucking day. Like, you know, a lot of our success comes from self-discovery and the time that we spend alone, not physically working, just really just being and um allowing things to come into our life rather than chasing them and just sitting back and finding out what is really meant for you and what stays and what goes and that's something I found out with YouTube is I'm totally into this so I started doing Vegas stripper vlogs and it has been the best thing ever I've gotten so much done and you know, the past few months I've been taking a little break as well. And I've been working behind the scenes on vlogs and editing stuff and still working, not posting, but you know, that's okay. Like that's totally fine because, um, you should never be scared. Don't ever be scared to do anything that you really want to do. It doesn't matter what, what other people think of it. If you know it in your heart, that that's your truth, then it will find its way to you no matter where you're at. So <laughs> mm-hmm. so how did your existing audience take it when you came out as a stripper? Okay, so I got a lot of... Uh, <laughs> I got a lot of positive feedback. A lot, a lot of people were like, honestly, more than not. I got more love than hate on that, which I was so happy Good. about. Um, but I... I got so much love from like random people who've been following me who had never talked to me in my life. I had a lot of people unfollow me. That's cool. See you later. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> after, but like, for real though, after I became, you know, told them I was a dancer, I got a lot of good, like, that I'm inspiring. And, you know, it's always, you know, just a lot of positive feedback. I found that. I was not getting the numbers like I was getting before because I could run up numbers. I I know I can do that because I've done that. It's not, it's not about that because once I ran up those numbers, I was like, okay, what do I do with it now? You know what I mean? Because I was giving people something that they wanted to see. Of course I was, you know what I mean? I, I found out the formula, I applied it and I got what I wanted, right? That's all I needed to do. But once I started being myself, I became a dancer. Everybody knows that now, like, that's real. Now I got to come from that place though. I'm always going to be coming from that place. I was attracting and still am attracting real people. And Mm -hmm. it's not like I'm no longer in this rat race of like running up followers or views. And that's kind of how it was before, because that was, that was the thing. That was why I was there, I guess. Right. But no, I did not realize that like I'm attracting a platform that seriously cares about me and I really care about them and I can tell them really anything. And you know, nobody's really going to be on your page if they don't fuck with what you're doing, right? Unless they're seriously mm-hmm. a hater, which is, it does not happen often, but they might not even be able to find you if that's not in their general interest. So I am so grateful for the people who are there riding with me. And, you know, it's mostly YouTube because I have a smaller, that's my smallest platform. And those are really the people who it's all women, you know, before I became, uh, before I told the internet that I was a dancer, I had all like men, mostly men following me. And I didn't really know how to connect fully with them. You know, I was always just trying to show off and be a bad bitch or whatever. Now yeah. it's like when I post and I come from my heart, like I get a lot of good feedback because it's really women following me now, especially mm-hmm. on YouTube and Instagram. Like I got a lot of women and it's like a lot of real support out there. And I'm, a, I'm definitely a supporter of people's um, crafts of like of this podcast right now of you and, you know, women who are seriously out there getting it, especially when it's things that seem like they're out of reach but you know they're really right there like I am so grateful to have women on my platform now that I've been open and honest about being a dancer like I had no idea that 
women would really like that. And I really thought that I was going to attract more men after that happened, but the men started to fall off. So <laughs> <laughs> that's like, funny. Right, hey, ladies, How are y'all? <laughs> That's funny. And it's so beautiful when you can attract an audience of like your peers that are inspired by you and that are proud of you and not just like gawking, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's People beautiful. People are just there to gossip a lot of the time and watch your life and have something to say about it and have something to talk about, something to look at rather than something or someone to connect to. Now that's where like real power and inspiration comes from is being able to connect to someone and it's really hard to connect to someone to someone who um is not connected to themselves you know so that's where i started really gaining what i what i really wanted was like a community and you know uh people to really hear me for what i have to say and that's when i decided to that happened when i decided to find myself and what I love and it's not about other people no it's about you know every everyone's journey is about inner growth and you attract that you attract uh where you're at so it's That's... it's like I said it's much easier <laughs> anyway it's like way less effort when you just are yourself that's it that's beautiful and it's it's interesting like you would expect coming out to open you up to more objectification but it seems like it actually humanized humanized you more for your audience instead and like that's an interesting turn of events like that's beautiful I completely agree I felt like the online presence that I had before I uh, was fully a dancer because I mean I um I came out as a dancer and then about a month later after that maybe a month or two is when I started like my healing journey and um that um uh, before that uh before my healing journey I, it could have provoked my healing journey a lot of things provoked it you know just me taking out the hair just being myself you know and there's nothing wrong with hair extensions but my hair extensions I was hiding behind them. Okay. I was, I was this Barbie girl. Like that's what I wanted. I wanted to have like, I wanted people to appreciate my personality. Right. This is where I had an identity crisis. I was like, why is nobody appreciating me for who I am? But all I was presenting to the world was like these bad bitch, like, um, I do this and you don't like, look at, look at all this. Like, look at how I look, like, look at who I am. Like, you know, almost like I wanted people to be jealous in a sense, or like, I just wanted to feel I'm like, you don't need people to be jealous for you to feel like a bad bitch. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, I think I was mixed up in like what I really wanted and like how I wanted to receive that, you know, and how I could receive that because I mean, I had the lack of credibility, right? People didn't want to hear what I had to say. They just wanted to look at me because I, mm -hmm. that's what I created. I created that. I created this online persona that is basically like, what I was um, displaying was something that was unattainable for a lot of people. And I, some part of me liked that some deep down, like dark part of me was getting validation from that. Um, and I thought that that's getting that kind of attention was what was going to fulfill me. And I was so confused why I was not fulfilled. I was so baffled. Like I have everything. I, I look exactly how I've always wanted to look. You know what I mean? I have all of these, like I ran up a fucking platform on TikTok, you know, like I'm, living my bad bitch best life and I'm not happy at all like I was so like I felt like I, there was something wrong with me there was nothing wrong with me it was like everything that was coming to my life was coming from a negative energy and that was coming from inside of me though that was a fucked up thing is I had to realize that it was coming from inside of me and I needed to heal that and change that and then once I did that I started yeah, like I was scared. It's so scary coming out as a dancer. It is scary as fuck, especially when mm -hmm. I, I have a I have a three year strong fucking platform of people who I could have, um, you know, made a business off of. I could have kept running up that same game and you know got a million followers and did that. Totally could have fucking could still do that. I could still do that. You know what I mean? But like, you know, that's just not that's not what was making me happy. And when I started to realize I could have all those same things, but like in a better light and coming from a better place and, you know, taking that leap 
just being myself telling the world this is what I fucking do if you don't like it there's the door <laughs> but this is what I'm going to talk about now so <laughs> like you don't have to stay but I appreciate it if you do but feel free to not um right and being yeah, being real and comfortable with yourself is so much worth so much more than all the money and followers in the world like because oh, you can yeah. just be content with who you are and how you present yourself and not have to worry mm -hmm. about what these people are going to think or say. Like, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's so beautiful. I'm, so grateful. <laughs> I'm grateful for the support I received because, you know, there was people who were like just being people. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you gotta look past that shit. Just know that the greatest art and the greatest work has come from like all my poll videos would have never happened. I'm so proud. I watch them every day. I just like scroll through my own shit. Good. <laughs> you should. You're um, fucking talented. Like... <laughs> Thank you. You deserve to pat cool. yourself on the back about it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's amazing that you had that experience and that like it worked out because it's it's so scary. Like, and people are gonna say rude, mean things no matter what the hell you're doing online. <laughs> like. It, no matter what you're doing, it, the, even the simplest things. I've seen, like, the most wholesome videos on YouTube have the rudest comments. Oh, yeah. Like, no matter what, you're subjecting yourself to negativity. So, it, at the end of the day, you might as well keep it easy on yourself and everyone mm -hmm. else. And, I mean, if you're not being yourself, you're you're going to attract people that don't align with you you're gonna attract people mm -hmm. based off of what you're displaying which isn't you right so then how do you like how do you converse with these people how do you collab with these people how do you create with these people you don't even know who you know they <laughs> you don't even know who they're trying to collab with that's like a whole different identity you created for yourself like that you're gonna have to like live up to in a sense which is literally impossible mm -hmm. you know and and then you wonder, like, people feel so lonely. It's because everybody around them is not the right people. They're not even the people who, who like, truly align with who they are, you know? So you're going to try to, like, be friends and connect with people who they are not your friend. They're friends with your other identity that you decided to show them. And it's just not worth it ever. But a lot of us, it's sad. We feel like we have to do this. I, I know I definitely felt like I had to do this. And you can get so lost and it can become very, you know, just dark. It becomes yeah. dark because you don't know who you are. You mm -hmm. literally like sacrifice the person you are for whatever you decided was better. And like deep down, you know, subconsciously that like you're hiding who you are and that's not nice to yourself. Like that's not good. And it's not mm -hmm. going to bring you anything that you truly want. It's going to bring you things that you can imagine, you can manifest whatever you want, right? Want whatever you think you want, but you're going to get it. And you're going to be like, why am I so, <laughs> and other people are going to feel that too. Other people, you know, you can sense when someone's just being genuine and mm -hmm. when someone's not being themselves. So that yeah, it doesn't feel good for anybody. And that like, even that even goes for offline friends too. Like I have a personal rule that like, no matter who I'm dating or who what roommates I've had in the past no one's allowed in my home if they can't know that I'm a sex worker and like it's it's been an issue in like previous relationships and I'm just like well if your friends can't know what I do for work then they can't come in my house <laughs> like yeah, because what are you gonna do hide everything right like and I even have like a big picture of my butt cheeks by the main entrance <laughs> of my house just to be like all right you're in my house now <laughs> <laughs> like in case you forgot where you were <laughs> uh, like, this is a major part of my life and if you can't be okay with that then you can't be in my life <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's like if I don't know like it's just yeah not I can't even stand people who could possibly be ignorant because I I personally would never whether I was a sex worker or not like I would never question someone's choice and uh, how they make their money because in the end right. of the day uh uh in case nobody noticed like we all have to make money okay like this yeah. is just <laughs> how life is and a lot of I, every girl every girl really like starts dancing 
because of the money, right? Or because of whatever situation we were in. But the beautiful thing about it that people don't shed enough light on is that how much we learn about ourselves, how much we learn about our own sex appeal. We're allowed to feel sexy. We're allowed to be sexy. We're allowed to get tipped for being sexy and rewarded for that. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. And like, there's something so beautiful in like finding the confidence in yourself to step up to the plate and seriously do that for yourself is crazy. And like, if nobody's paying my bills, you're not legitimately paying my bills. Um, even if you were paying my fucking bills, like I, <laughs> I wouldn't not dance. Yeah, you can find someone else to pay the bills. <laughs> like, I mean, honestly, I have a better chance finding someone to pay the bills there than I do like pretending like I don't want to do it, you know? So yeah. Oh, yeah, I just, I would <laughs> never understand. Like, I, I couldn't imagine telling somebody that, like, they can't do their job. Like, it's mind boggling. Like, we all have to have some kind of work or income. Like, I couldn't imagine, like, any other industry being like, no, that you shouldn't do that because I don't agree with it. <laughs> you know? Uh, no, like, I, if I was truly coming home every night depressed and like if I like hate truly like was hating dancing and it could be visible to my loved ones that is the time where I would say that somebody could say something Mm -hmm. but I'm literally fucking thriving and I'm living my best life I'm getting all the opportunities I could ever ever dreamed of just being in this environment and it Mm -hmm. might sound crazy to some people but if that's what you see how would you ever ever dare try to take that away from me Mm -hmm. or make me feel bad about it like I cannot stand that I cannot stand that it's because people don't want to believe that that's possible because of what they've seen in the stigma so when they see it of course it's going to make them uncomfortable and they're going to try to make you feel like it's wrong even though you know the truth it's what Mm -hmm. you like to do we could easily drop what we're doing and literally go to nobody's stuck anywhere nobody's stuck like even girls who think that they're stuck like they're not stuck like we all have another option there's always another job to have like there's always something some other way to make money or someone else to move in with or take care of our us or whatever if that's what we wanted if Mm -hmm. all especially sex workers like if we wanted to quit this shit and let someone take care of us we get like 45 offers a day okay we can (laughs) we got options girl right right and I I remember when I was younger and I first started like my backup plan was always like all right if if it all goes to shit I can always get flown out to Guam (laughs) we got like countries on deck right oh there's so many options so many options (laughs) (laughs) the crazy thing is like people thing especially like that fact of like we really don't have to do what we do we choose to so I mean take it as you will you know take it as you will but I mean I know girls who who did just that they 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 done got flown out girl (laughs) and they quit this shit like they quit this shit and they could they can they can do that so but if we're still writing it out you know there's a reason and uh if there wasn't pole dancing, I would be done dancing. That's the point blank period. If there was no pole dancing, I'd be done dancing. Like, I don't, you know, necessarily always want to do that. But there is something also about the other aspects of it. Like, take it as you will, but like, just like, like feeling yourself and like getting compliments Mm -hmm. and connecting with guys that are not willing to open up to anyone else just the this random stripper like yeah literally like I've gotten so many I have gotten so much advice I've given so much advice I have helped people through like really shitty times in their yes. life being there you know in this VIP in fucking Las Vegas like you know you never know you're gonna get a life-changing advice okay the champagne but, room therapy sessions <laughs> Well, I'm a certified champagne room therapist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I like doing it though. I don't feel like I'm a, I'm just taking in everybody's heat. Like I feel like when somebody comes to me and they start opening up, like I instantly lock in. I'm like, okay, go on. What what do you have to yeah. say? Like, talk to me. Like it sounds like you know a lot of these people do not are not used to doing that, and they don't they don't like doing that or they're they don't have a safe space to do that so when they Mm -hmm. come to me with it like it's really like an honor that I have the opportunity to be able 
to say something that might change how they're feeling. And that yeah. in any case is a blessing. You know, we're all really just here to help each other, no matter what the circumstances or the location or environment, like we really all have so much power to help each other and we should utilize it. We should be there for each other in any way that we can, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, I also, I also want to bring up like the conversation of camaraderie in this industry. Like, it's so beautiful to be around so many amazing, talented women and like to be able to learn from them. Like I've learned so much from other strippers. It's incredible. It's incredible. And like, especially business related stuff. I have learned yes. more from other dancers and sex workers than any other type of people I interact with. Yeah, you know why? You know why that is? Because we are so smart. You know why that is though? Because we have access to lawyers, doctors, business people, entrepreneurs, people yes. who own 25 different houses, yes. 25 different states. Like we get to talk to people like that all day and they're willing to talk to us. And we want to talk about that. Like we're not just some like random girl at the bar trying to hook up. Like we're real people. And like, you know, if you ask the right questions to the right customers, you can get to know so much more than like a college education would be able to give you. You know what I'm saying? Like you, we can learn anything that we want. And the most beautiful thing is that we help each other. Like I have noticed that, like what I did not notice in uh, Chicago that I noticed in Vegas and you know, girls with the customers, that's a different story in Vegas versus the girls to the customers in Chicago. But as far as like dressing room shit goes and like, just like personal uh, dancer etiquette towards other dancers, the girls in Vegas are unbelievably nice and beautiful and kind and they know so much and they're always willing to share and help like if you literally like that's the thing I love about women especially women who are dancers is we really understand each other like mm -hmm. we understand that like shit happens like, I don't care if it's a girl you thought you hated like if she's sitting there crying like nine times out of ten like you know we're always there for each other we always know because we know how hard it can be to put ourselves in the environment that we put ourselves in it's very difficult and challenging and emotionally um just a huge challenge and I love you know women who are dancers understand women in general like no other like mm -hmm. no other like we truly have like dove deep into our sexuality in ways that people don't even know exists yeah. <laughs> and we truly understand how deep it goes and how hard it can be and you know there is so much advice to offer there's so much help to be given and women who are dancers truly understand that and like I love all all women who are dancers like no matter what your situation is or what your forte is you go in there and you run up a fucking bag or you go in there and you go on the pole or you go in there and you're getting lit <laughs> whatever <laughs> like you know you're doing, it, you're doing it like you're there for the cause then you've seen things that other people have not is basically what I'm trying to say is like you know if you're a dancer you have seen things a lot of people have not and uh in a good way and a bad way you know you've mm -hmm. learned things that other people would never even care to know like, we care because you know what that is a real thing you know like I want to be a performer and entertainer forever but when you come across so many business people and so many people who seriously know what the fuck they're doing like you can't help but want to get into it you can't help but want to ask questions you can't help but want to know and maybe try to do it yourself and branch out yourself like it's a very confidence building thing just to be in the club with so many people who have so much money and so much advice to offer so yeah I think it's an amazing thing that we can all share that with each other There's so much we can learn from each other's experiences sit back and listen and see what advice this babe has for you my advice for people who want to be a dancer or who are already a dancer um basically you will make Make the most money by being yourself like I think that's just the theme of my entire life pretty much but I from day one this is this is pretty much what went down my first day dancing like I was so nervous and so scared because I literally have never approached a stranger in my life and that's pretty much what you have to do and I thought to myself like okay this is how I'm gonna do it I'm going to talk to them like they're my best friends. And I'm going to tell them like what happened this morning, a funny story that I can think of off the top of my head. If they say something, if it reminds me of something, just say it, tell them, be funny, be myself. Like, just tell them like 
oh my god I like spilled water all over myself right now like or some funny shit like just be straight up or like whatever tell them about your day tell them about your cat like whatever (laughs) be real and that's the best way to break the ice and then you know what you get to start it off genuine and then if you want to go in for the pickup line and try to get a dance go for it after that because not only are they fulfilled because you came off as a genuine person but now you're you're fulfilled because you probably had a good conversation (laughs) exactly exactly that's so that's so right on Mm -hmm. and you just get you get so much farther with a genuine conversation and with like actually connecting to people as opposed to just trying to run game on them and like run your game but like slide it in (laughs) oh yeah like pick the right time girl like don't just be like hey want to dance like no yeah. that's never gonna do it for anybody involved it's not gonna do it for anybody like just go and have a good time and watch how much money you make literally watch how much money you make because right. i used to think i would have to be drunk and like you know all like oh hell no i work sober so many times and my go-to mm-hmm. is just okay i'm just gonna show up because i'm worth it and i know they're gonna see that so show Mm -hmm. up and see what happens and that's that's the other thing is like you have to genuinely believe that you're worth whatever money they have in their pocket (laughs) like you have to really believe in yourself because they can smell the fear on you oh my god I know you have to be 100% confident and like the truth is we all do deserve it that's why we show up in the first place so exactly just remembering that throughout the whole night and you know don't ever feel like don't ever get off your game when you're at work. Like, don't mm-hmm. be fucking around, though. Like, don't be fucking around, like, trying to be in drama or trying to make friends or anything. If you make friends, cool, but don't be trying to do that. Go there and try to make your money, right? Try to mm-hmm. make your money. Um, have the right approach. Be genuine as possible at all times. And it will just flow to you. Don't get in any drama. And, you know, focus on your personal hobbies and, like, focus on yourself. Like, it but make sure that you're still enjoying it. Check in mm-hmm. with yourself. Maybe you need a month off. Okay, maybe maybe you're in a spot where you can't just go take a month off, right? Run up a fucking bag. Work every day for a week. Bust your ass and save up for to pay for a month of bills and then take a month off. Take a few weeks off. Like do something. Like we all have the option. Like I could go to a club right now at like 5 p.m. If I needed to make a dollar thousand dollars I would go to some club and make it happen you know like we have freedom we can bring in as much or as little as we choose choose Mm -hmm. just choose Mm -hmm. amen (laughs) amen oh you are spitting nothing but facts today (laughs) it has been so amazing to talk to you and to have this conversation and I'm so excited to share this all with our listeners um, why don't you tell us where we can find more of you on the internet, like your channel, your social handles? Perfect. So my YouTube channel is just my name, Amanda Shantz. Um, my Instagram is XXMXNDA. Okay, so you might be able to link those before. <laughs> I tried to be creative, girl, but then I realized nobody could spell it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, if you want to see more of me, um, I have a lot of poll videos on my Instagram. On my YouTube, I have stripper vlogs on there. Um, I would love to see some people come check it out and let me know what you think. Like, I love having conversations about this stuff and getting more people connected and seeing what it's all really about. Yes, and definitely, definitely, definitely come see our show at Scores in Las Vegas on Thursday nights. We will be there being hot on stage. And I want to give a big shout out to Mike from A-List Features and um, to Tim for taking gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous pictures and just everybody involved in putting together this show. Thank you so much for bringing us together and giving me an opportunity to work with this gorgeous woman. She's so talented and I cannot wait for you guys to see what we do together. (laughs) Thank, Thank you. you so, so much for having me, girl. I'm so honored again to be Thank here. Thank you for being here. You are amazing. It was wonderful talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. This has been a production with Period Podcast Network. You can follow us on Instagram at Period Podcast Network. Also at Yes, A Stripper Podcast. We are on Twitter at Yes, a stripper pod. If you like what you heard today, please remember to subscribe. Or check out our sponsor, Xpole USA. 
Just follow the link below in the description or go to bit.ly slash xpolyas.